All right, I've just received my Bula Boards board break and um, been looking forward to this for a long, long time. And as I ripped off the label, I decided I'm going to do an un unboxing video. I've never done an unboxing video before, but they're all the rage, I'm, I'm assured. Um, there's no box, so it's not really an unboxing, but I am for the first time taking uh, everything out of the box and getting my first look at it. Um, so there we have the board break. It is a great way, I'm assured, of slowing down and stopping a longboard. It mounts onto your longboard underneath, you push down, and if you've seen my other videos, it looks similar to my own constructions. The first thing I noticed, but I, I was sort of forewarned about this, it's made of steel, stainless steel. It's quite heavy compared to my own constructions. Um, I've been using PVC here and sometimes very, very thin aluminium. And uh, I've generally on my own got quite smaller constructions. So that's the first thing. This thing weighs, hmm, if it's not a kilogram, it's probably 600 grams or so, 700 grams. Does it say anywhere? Rugged construction. Check. Stainless steel, that ain't gonna break. Easy to use. Uh, we'll see. I'm sure it is though. Easy to install. We'll see. Sleek design. Well, that's subjective, but it looks a lot better than what I've been building. 70% um, recycled materials. So that's good. And if you're a protectionist, it's made in the USA. Um, What I find very interesting about this is the shape. My brakes typically would have to have another bend at the top here to make this area flat so that it's flush with the board. But you would typically have this and this part parallel and sort of an S design or a Z design, a Z design in between. So I'm thinking if this gets stuck on a board and you want to bend it down, that's going to be quite a bit of tension going on there quite a lot more than you need. So I'll be interested to see how that works. Could make the brake quite hard to push. If we look at one of my designs, you can see what I'm talking about. I say design, but these are just hacks. We've got this parallel surface here, parallel surface here, and it's quite easy to push. So this is one I tried also doing with metal bit of rubber. Very similar design to Tony's brake. In here, one of the older designs, piece of PVC. Very, very easy to move. Can hang a little bit, but much, much lighter design. Okay, but obviously this is a professional product, so it's a lot more There goes the cameraman. Right, now you can see it better now. What else have we got in the bag? You get a Bula Boards sticker. BulaBoards.com, you can check out their boards. You can get a complete board with the brake. We have a set of instructions. But I think it's reasonably straightforward. Should be reasonably straightforward. I've built a few brakes. And we got a few. And we got another. What's that? That's a business card. Little bag with odds and ends. Looks like washers or spacers. That'll be the foot brake. It's even got a bit of grip tape on top. So that'll be for activating. Guessing that screws in there eventually. Is it pre-threaded? Yep, that screws in there nicely. Now that is very good. I'm quite impressed with that because, to be honest, this is the failing point of most of my brakes. I have usually wood here, and I either have a screw or a bolt, and the bolt is constantly coming out, or the screw's working loose. This feels really, oh, 
I am. I'm loving that. Just looking at this, I initially thought it was wood, this cylinder here, but it looks like to be certainly some sort of plastic. I'm not sure what. The good thing about it is it's got a nice bite on it and it's really biting these threads. I wonder if it's pre-threaded. Yes, if it's pre-threaded. So those two were just made for each other. Tony, I'm very impressed with that. I also see there's a bit of rubber around here. I like that because when you drill a hole in the board, it's got to be a, a millimeter or so bigger than the stop because the stop sometimes comes at an angle and you need a bit more space. And then it can rattle around. So if you've got some rubber there, it stops that noise. You don't want to break rattling around. That's a big thing. And it looks like Tony's really taken that into account. In terms of construction, he's used four screws or bolts with uh, Loctite nuts on the back. Um, that's different from what I've been doing. I've gone with a screw through uh, the uh, rubber and into a block of wood on top. So I've been doing it like that. And uh, this is obviously a lot more solid. It's got four screws going through metal, so that's going to be a lot more solid. The brake also making use of the fact that rubber is soft. The heads of the screws are nicely embedded in there. Can't see them, so that's going to wear down nicely. And presumably right at the very end when you get to the either the material or even deeper, you'll actually start hitting the screws. At that time, good time to change because otherwise you won't be able to get the screws out anymore. They'll wear away. Now, this looks like a very tough rubber. It's not a car tire, which means it's smooth here. Car tires would have tread. Um, and I think having tread is not a great idea. So I think the more contact patch you have, the better. And he's got a huge contact patch here, which means I think this brake pad is going to last a really long time. Um, my ones are a lot thinner. They don't always touch the road consistently. And that's an important thing is that this has to go down on the road um, I would say at a slight angle, but then at some point when you're pushing really hard, it should be flush with the road. And that gives you the most stopping ability as well as the longest life. So they've done a good job there. Now there was something, Tony mentioned something about the spaces. Yeah, you can add these spaces on before because obviously the brake's going to push up against the top of the board. And if you put on a few of these spaces, he sent me three, then you can get more space between the brake and the board. So if you've got a really low deck, you would have that, like a drop through mount or a drop deck. And for a top mount, you might go that way. And there are then three screws, which allow you to, oh, I've already lost one washer. Three screws here included in the bag to actually mount it to the board. So that looks good. It says if you have any questions or concerns about the installation, contest, contact us at bulaboards at gmail.com. That's the great thing about uh, new products, small companies. You get good support because you actually get the, the, the developer or the inventor on the line. So I'm really looking forward to, to trying this out. Um, unfortunately, as you can see, not fit for skating at the moment. Um, and that's not because I didn't have a break. <laughs> I did have a break. Um, but I still managed to break, haha, uh, my shoulder. So it's going to be a while before I get a real review of how this thing works. But uh, when I do, I'll be sure to post it on YouTube. Thanks for watching.